So I'm getting ready to go over to iRecat um, and we're going to show you how they've installed their batteries, wiring and everything in preparation for their electric engines. Hi, we are Erica and Davey, an adventurous, slightly crazy couple who has taken on the challenge that is a hurricane damaged catamaran. We have come so far, subscribe to our channel to follow our journey. Take a chance, you never know how perfect something may turn out to be. So as you saw last week, Davey helped with the fiberglassing to make the part where the electric pods will attach underneath the boat. So now we'll get ready to do the really interesting part and put the motors in. Oh my gosh, it's so empty. So this is Lonnie from iRecat. Hello. Hello YouTube world. <laughs> YouTube world. Um, so the setup for these uh, electric motors is sort of simple really. There's a uh, pylon that will come out of the motor and hook into this box here uh, with a positive and a negative and then out of the box comes a positive and a negative and we run this to a bus bar back here which we'll look at in a second and uh, then from that bus bar they connect to the batteries. Uh, and this third cable here is just a data cable that runs to a, uh, a um, emergency stop switch, a key switch, and also the throttles. Uh, so pretty simple setup in the uh, in the engine room here. It looks so different from ours. <laughs> but there you can see uh, where the uh, where the plug has come up in. See where we're going to have to do a little bit more fiberglassing down in there just to tab it in from the other side. There's a lot of torque from these engines, so we want it to basically be super, super strong. And like Lonnie said before, it's going to be stronger than the rest of the boat. <laughs> <laughs> so like we've said many times, Eerie Cat, Eerie Cat, sorry. Eerie Cat, Eerie Cat. <laughs> we keep getting that wrong, but now I'm going to say it wrong. So just Eerie Cat is a Mahi 36, it's a 2007 model, so it is slightly different on the inside. And they do have a lot of stuff everywhere, like we do but it's pretty cool. So their battery station is down on the starboard side where our fuel tank actually lives. I'll just climb in yeah. here, that's all right. Oh, that's a lot of batteries. So they have this, uh, um, whatever this cable's called, something uh, 175. <laughs> So, and it comes from Big Battery, which is the ones I got. I got Big Battery Lynx. They're 48 volts, uh, just over 100 amp hours each. And uh, these just plug into them. Uh, it makes it easy to plug and unplug them. Uh, and then they run to the bus bar, which we can show you in a second. So as you can see with where they decided to put their batteries here, there is a lot of ventilation. Um, there's lots of space. Um, there is actually a wall that goes up in here, but they're not sure if they're going to put that back in yet. It might not fit exactly with the battery, so there might be a curtain that goes across. That's still in the deciding stages. But there is nice little doors here. There is lots of ventilation around, so it will keep the batteries cool. I kind of wish we didn't have a fuel tank right next to where we sleep. This would be awesome. If you look in here, we've got a positive and a negative bus bar in there. So the solar, uh, which we have about 2,000 uh, kilowatts of solar, go in on this arch. And on the top above us, you can see that's all solar. Um, 2,000 watts or 2,000 kilowatts? 2,000 watts. 2,000 watts. Yep. Kilowatts? Watts? <laughs> Kilowatts would be like yeah. everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> Next time. Next time. So um, 2,000 watts of solar. Yep. Yeah. And so the solar will go to, to the bus bar there also to charge the batteries. And then back here, we put in on the 48 volt system um, a 3,000 watt inverter. And then there you can see the negative bus bar for the motors, which is then connected to that other bus bar 
So you guys don't like to say, or you don't like to use your motors at all. So that's why you've decided to go electric, right? Correct. Yeah, we've been practicing for the last few years, uh, just trying to sail, uh, which is kind of crazy to go to all this trouble to <laughs> install something that you don't plan to use. But here we are. But it's good to have a backup. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And we do also have a plan in place that we'll have a really long tow line in case in case there's no wind and in case they're out of power we can always tow them behind barefoot <laughs> he's like yeah, that's, nah. that's davy's wish <laughs> so instead of a hard top on their boat they have their panels up here which kind of create a hard top as well and then they're going to put more panels up here on the back of the boat on their arch so we have about 1600 watts of solar and they have about 2000 watts of solar they're planning on cooking electric as well and they have the electric engines so with the amount of solar that both our boats have we should be pretty good in the bahamas to uh pump her back up and be able to do everything we want electric so a bit of an update on irie cat they've just painted their bottom with their epoxy barrier coat so it looks quite nice and those pieces look fantastic so not only is Irie Cat, I said it right, yeah, <laughs> Irie Cat, um, they're putting in their electric engines, but they've also decided to get rid of their gasoline dinghy engine, and they have bought this beautiful sailing dinghy. So they will have no fossil fuels on board. Except for their generator. But Davey will be happy to tow us. Yes. Davey has indicated he'll be happy to tow Many us. Many times he said that. But look how cool this is going to look. <laughs> so what do you reckon, guys, with this new fancy dinghy they got? They've taken out the diesel motors. They've got rid of the propane, gone fully electric. And they've even got rid of the tender with the outboard motor on it, and they've gone to a sailing dinghy. How many times do you reckon they're going to ask for a ride to the beach or the store when we get to the Bahamas? Don't be disappointed <laughs> yeah. if the answer to that is never. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, Lonnie's actually quite stubborn, so if I make comments like that, he'll never ask. <laughs> so these are the Torque. Do you want to tell us which motors these are? These are the 12.0 FPs. And that's uh, by Torquedo, isn't it? That's by Torquedo, yep. It's a pod motor, so all of the uh, motor is in here instead of some of the manufacturers put the motor on in the there top of and the then sail use drive. a sail drive or, and drive shaft uh, to power the props. So it's all in one but unit, this is basically. All in one unit under the so water. all we're basically putting through the boat, then we're putting the big power cable, which just does all the data and uh, the electricity delivery system. Yep. And then it's three bolts, isn't it? Three That's bolts it. and some washers up the top. Yep. So fingers crossed, guys, that this fits. Otherwise, I didn't do a very good job. <laughs> this way. So that's why we wanted it to be nice and strong, right? Because the whole motor. Yeah, you, it's the whole motor. Yeah. Have you got your washes and nuts up there? Yes. All right. Okay. So you're ready for us to come up? Yes. All right, we're on the way. Oh. Look at that. Make it fit. <laughs> <laughs> Just barely on, Terry. Looks like a, Looks it, was like it was made, made from factory. Look at that. <laughs> well done, Davy. They sit lower than the sail drives, eh? Uh, a little bit. Much. Yeah, it looks like a little, little bit. bit. Yeah. Imagine if it had that thing on there. Yeah, that plastic piece that we got rid of and made the, yeah. the solid piece, didn't we? Yeah. It's not gonna do any harm. If, no, if no, it no. slips down, it'll no. be fine. We could always just finger spin those nuts further down, just so it's sitting in the right spot. So, spot. do you know how to drive these? Drive them? No. There might be a bit of a learning curve, though, with the yeah. torque and stuff. I and it's a very tight little very... marina and slip that we've got to get out of for first drive. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Inches on each side. Yeah. And these things are just going to go off when I hit the throttle. As soon as you touch the throttle, the boat's going to go. Yeah. So, like, I can just barely get them on. I mean, I. They're pretty. Yeah. Yeah, it looks good. Close to the rudder. Terry, can you straighten the wheel? Yeah. <laughs> that's Ezra. Yeah, I know. <laughs> From my angle, it looks close. So, yeah, they definitely, they said they didn't 
take into consideration the rudder. So it's a good thing that there is space there in between. That would have been a bugger, wouldn't it, babe? <laughs> I know it fit. I checked them before. You did? <laughs> Long time ago. When I first had them here, I did measurements, so I knew roughly it was gonna, it would fit. At least someone was on it. Yeah. <laughs> so just to give you a little bit of an update, what we've done in here in the inside. So you've seen the pods from the outside. This is the hole where the electric comes up, and these are the studs then to, um, to, to bolt it down. So there was the flange that I showed you before. Now built the glass up to that and put about 10 layers of glass above the flange. So this is the original support system for the sail drives, the SD20s. And now it's all basically locked together with the, the part that we made, the plug that came out of the mold, and the ceiling part on the top. So, looks pretty solid. I only had one, one bolt. I don't know. It's like a couple something of something he was going to do. Or? It was like a couple. is stronger, no? Oh. Oh, gone. That's it. Hey, Send the motor back. back to right boat, Davey. Davey, Davey at his best. <laughs> she leaves it inside. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there we go. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they won't be after they've been in the water a few months. No. <laughs> I'll spin this around. Just wait for Terry. Yep. So I was saying before, they're gonna have so much space in their engine rooms. Yeah. What, well, so what I want to do is take some uh, a thickened epoxy and make a little flat surface above those holes so that yeah. there's... Just that, to level it? Yeah, so that that washer mm -hmm. can sit. And I have a bigger washer that I need to... It's too wide here, mm -hmm. so I need to grind the washer away a little yeah. bit. Just cut the edge off and I can grind it. This should go up like a baby. That was easier. Yeah. Didn't get as so much paint in the holes in this one, maybe. It could be, yeah. Probably got right. epoxy primer and all that in right. the other one. So from this to this. So shortly after getting them installed in the boat, uh, they did leave them down slightly so that they could paint them with a special paint to help protect them when they're in the water. The boat is starting to look great and the end is in sight. So the last step with these electric engines on iRecat is to connect them up inside, paint the bottom of the boat, and then basically get her back in the water and test them out. So stay tuned, we will keep you posted on iRecat because we are planning on traveling a little bit with them in the Bahamas. So we will keep you updated on how the electric engines are going for them and just any positive, negative, pros and cons, all that kind of stuff. We'll keep you updated as we travel along.